You may now begin your presentation. Good afternoon. I'm Jessica Welch, president of Flagler College Scythe, a junior business major. Hi, I'm Alyssa Murphy, a freshman communication major. Hello, I'm Catherine Baggett, a junior economics major. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Wilmers, a sophomore business major. Hello, I'm Stevie Shank, a freshman communication major. Hi, I'm Cameron Lapp, a junior communication major. Behind the visual today, we have Hannah Garner, a junior art major. Victoria Van Arnhem, a freshman business major. And our presentation coordinator, Sheila Acharya, a junior business major. For FC Scythe, this has been a year of new challenges, new projects, and new ideas. We stretched our limits, our imagination, and our impact on others. We made a difference in people's lives, and along the way, our lives as well. Our 50 members invested over 10,000 hours on 20 projects designed to promote economic opportunity. There's a lot to cover, so let's do it by the numbers. Sometimes, numbers can save you money. 12, that's the ABC, NBC TV channel that airs FC Sife's financial literacy feature, Amero's Army. First, there was Cash Positive Radio, FC Sife's nationally syndicated consumer affairs show. Next, came First Aid for Your Wallet, our monthly newspaper column filled with budget building tips, much like consumer cliff notes. Now, there's Amero's Army. It's a great project, you know, you can't be everywhere, so now we've got Amero's Army, which is going to reach out into the community Aww. with some great ideas. Ken Amero, the consumer reporter for the number one TV station in Jacksonville, Florida, has a viewing audience of over one million daily. FC Sy proposed an idea to Ken Amero for a feature that would teach financial literacy. Mr. Amero was familiar with our consumer affairs newspaper column and our radio show and decided to give us a try. He dubbed our financial literacy team Amero's Army. Amero's Army's monthly feature teaches consumers how to stretch their shrinking dollar. We try it. We taste it. We test it. We study it. We report it. So you can hang on to your hard-earned money in these tough times. Amero's Army is a free course in financial literacy. So far, we've produced 24 segments, each of which has aired on the 5, 6, and 11 o'clock news. Topics include identity theft credit scores, reducing your utility bills, the importance of small print, and even more tip-offs to prevent other rip-offs. So you can make wise financial choices. Look, I found tax returns. You should never throw these away, but if you do, make sure you shred them. Over 70 million identities are sold each year from information found on financial statements and tax returns. Not shredding can cost you a whole lot more than your taxes. Today, most people think that they can't save money. Amero's Army shows them how. Each feature challenges viewers to take what they have learned from the segment, implement it, and then write about their experiences on the First Coast News website. The show is also available online, where our videos can be viewed and rated. To measure our impact, FC Sife set up focus groups with a broad demographic, high schools, college students, and the Council on Aging. Pre- and post-tests of all groups showed an average of 33% increase in their understanding of subjects covered and 67% felt the information had increased their financial literacy. The destination is financial literacy, and Amero's Army is FC Sites' GPS to get you there. 100, the average monthly savings reported online by Amero's Army viewers. 1,000, the amount of money awarded to Amero's Army by the HSBC Financial Literacy Grants. 3 million, the potential viewing and online audience for Amero's Army. 12 million. The annual economic impact if just 1% of the Amerizami audience saves the average of $100 per month. Sometimes numbers can teach. 1 million. That's the number of high school students that drop out each year. The primary reason students drop out of school is because they're not engaged and lose interest in learning. High school dropouts earn $9,300 less per year than high school graduates and $1 million less over a lifetime than college graduates. Since education is the key to keeping America competitive in the global economy, it is FC Sife's mission to encourage at-risk students to stay in school by showing them that learning can be fun. But to engage 60 at-risk high school students, we needed something they could relate to. That something was a pair of jeans. Destination Denim told the story of people and pants in the borderless world of global trade. Jeans have a label from one country, but handprints from many. 
The students deconstructed genes and discovered that at least 11 countries contribute to the production of a single pair. Cotton from Pakistan. Dyes from Germany. Hardware from Sweden. Cutting in India. Sewn in Turkey. The students learned how products produced in different countries are shipped around the globe, and that each person in the distribution channel must make a profit, and that these profits affect the retail price. To test the effectiveness of this program, we had the students participate in their favorite TV game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? We asked questions like, what is the euro and what is free trade? Pre and post game show tests show the participants had a 43% increase in knowledge of market economics. But most importantly, 98% said they were committed to staying in school to increase their chances of success. And that was their final answer. FC Science market economics programs have been so successful they will be a key element for 200 students in St. Augustine's summer camps. 367, the number of genes owned by FC Scythe members. 440, the number of students who learned the importance of education by participating in all of our market economics programs. 9,200, the amount of money lost each year by not graduating from high school. 276,000, the potential increase in income if 30 of the destination dinner participants graduate from high school. Sometimes, numbers can be frightening. 207 million. That's the amount of money cut from the Florida State budget for programs for the developmentally disabled. Arc of St. John's is a nonprofit organization that works with the mentally challenged. These budget cuts would dramatically affect Arc's vocational training programs. To keep the programs alive, Arc needed another source of revenue. An FC Scythe Business Advisory Board member suggested that Arc partner with FC Scythe to find a solution. You're probably asking, why FC Scythe? Let me explain. Ten years ago, FC Scythe started a small tour business to teach entrepreneurship. We called it Flagler's Legacy. This business has grown into a retail enterprise with two stores in an online location. Operated by 35 students, it has revenues of more than half a million a year and serves over 70,000 visitors annually. The tours also have a substantial economic impact on our business community. For every dollar spent on our tours, $6 is spent at a local restaurant, retail store, or hotel. The impact on St. Augustine's economy is approximately $2.9 million annually. Our challenge was to transfer the Flagler's Legacy model into a business opportunity for ARC that would generate revenue and serve as a vocational training program for the developmentally disabled. Entrepreneurship and success skills, right up our alley. We found our solution on ARC's campus. ARC had an evacuation center with a kitchen that was seldom used. We suggested that they use this facility to operate a catering lunch business run by their special needs clients. ARC liked the idea. There are no programs in Florida that teach the mentally challenged how to handle, prepare, and serve food. This project would offer their clients the opportunity to be part of an industry that has been mostly unattainable. We had a lot to do. Government regulations. Health and safety issues. Studying the competition. Creating and testing menus. And most importantly, finding a manager who understood the restaurant business and how to work with individuals with disabilities. Along the way, we learned a lot about things that we took for granted, like making a sandwich, two slices of bread, mayo, turkey, a slice of cheese, lettuce and tomato, nothing to it. Well, not so easy. Every task, from dishwashing to slicing a tomato, requires training and a time and motion study to determine fair wages. 20 size students, seven months, hundreds of hours, thousands of decisions, seven ARC administrators, one manager, one time in motion volunteer. And we were in business. Now we'd like you to meet some of the employees. Diane, the first employee. She's 46 years old and has never had a job. Now, she is the chief recruiter. Ashley is 26. She gets to work early. She shares lots of hugs. Meet Andrew. He's 24 and dreams of living on his own. This job will get him closer to that dream. These employees have made the business their own. They call it the traveling lunchbox. They prepare the food and write inspirational statements that are included with every sandwich, like pass a hug along and wrap yourself in sunshine. These special people are learning success skills like punctuality, cleanliness, and teamwork. 
And they are making money. But some things can't be measured in dollars and cents. Like the sense of accomplishment that is written on Diane's face when she puts on an apron and begins making a sandwich. The traveling lunchbox is more than a food service. It's a new life and independence for Diane, Judy, Keith, Ashley, Andrew, Sally, and all future traveling lunchbox employees. Twelve, the number of employees who will receive vocational training each year at the traveling lunchbox. Five thousand two hundred, the yearly salary for each traveling lunchbox employee. Sixty-two thousand four hundred, the total first year salaries for all traveling lunchbox employees. One hundred and twelve thousand, the projected first year revenue for the traveling lunchbox. One hundred and forty-six thousand, the economic impact in the first year of the traveling lunchbox. Thank you, Flagler College Sci, for turning a sandwich into a whole new life for the people here at ARC. Sometimes, numbers can save the planet. 3,000, that's the number of American companies that had environmental violations in the past year. Recognizing that the Earth is a very fragile place, FC Sci created Green Evaders, a program that challenges and educates the community on the value of environmental sustainability and our impacts on the planet. We designed three projects to increase environmental awareness, stimulate dialogue, and affect change. Our first Green Invaders project was simple. Show kids that what they do today will have an impact on their future. When we asked fifth graders what they would do to preserve our water supply, we got some interesting answers. I would never flush the toilet again. Okay, I would drink Gatorade instead of water. Never take a shower again. They were all correct, but not exactly what we had in mind. We taught 80 elementary school students about their carbon footprint, alternative energy, and simple ways to save the planet. Phase two was our Avant Garbage Eco Art Show. We challenged the community to turn trash into art. They accepted the challenge by diving into dumpsters, scouring the beach for bottles, and scrambling for old electronics. The show attracted over 500 visitors and 40 artists. We had a landfill of creativity. A woman in her 70s made portraits out of newspapers, and a third grader made an eagle out of soda cartons and paper towels. A pile of more than 1,000 water bottles collected in just two weeks illustrated the size of our carbon footprint. Some of the artists sold their creations at the show and turned their art into a business, proving that going green is good for the environment and the bottom line. Our final Green Invaders event challenged the community to invent a product that would save the planet. The ideas ranged from the practical, solar blinds, to the outrageous, kinetic kicks, shoes that create energy while you walk. Our 53 inventions were judged by local experts in the green industry. The innovations were scored based on environmental impact, originality, and future marketability. The winning invention was a solar-powered recumbent vehicle designed to replace a car for short commutes. Driving this vehicle instead of a car for 5,000 miles could save enough energy to light a house for a year. The inventor, Matt, is a 14-year-old. Green Innovators gave him the confidence to make his invention a commercial reality. Working with the American Solar Energy Society, Matt completed his prototype for market. Matt is also using the $500 Green Innovators prize money as his first major investment into his future and ours. 22, the number of water-saving solutions from our Green Innovator participants. 100, the percentage of participants surveyed who learned ways to save the planet. 600, the number of people who participated in our Green Innovators projects. Sometimes, numbers can create new beginnings. 200, that's the number of Nepalese refugees that have just arrived in Jacksonville, Florida. My family is from Nepal. When we heard that these were the first of 6,000 refugees coming to Jacksonville, we knew we had to do something. These refugees are here because two decades ago, 117,000 Nepalese living in Bhutan were victims of ethnic cleansing. They were beaten, raped, tortured, and forced to flee the country. They settled in refugee camps, and for the past 17 years, these families have lived in bamboo huts with no running water or electricity. Countries around the world have now opened their borders to receive these refugees. This could have been my family. When my parents came to America, they spoke English, they were educated, and they had jobs, but it was still a struggle. 
things we take for granted, like shopping for groceries, getting an education, and finding a place to live would be major challenges. After 14 weeks, their aid ends, and they are completely on their own. Then what? When Sheila told us what these refugees would be facing, FC Sif had to help. FC Sif designed a series of interactive programs to help these refugees succeed in their new life. We organized field trips to banks, supermarkets, laundromats, and the public library. Each week, we visited our new friends, and over a cup of chai, we taught them everything, from how to clean a bathroom to how to dress for interviews. Rom is 45. He hasn't been able to get a job because he isn't fluent in English. FC Sife is helping Rom learn English, write a resume, and apply for a job. Rom is one of 50 participating in FC Sife's Success Skills Seminars. Rook and her husband have jobs, but need help learning how to manage your money. FC Sife's Financial Literacy Seminars are teaching Rook and 40 refugees how to open a bank account, balance a checkbook, and pay their rent on time. Mitra is 23 and struggling to support his parents and five brothers. He works nights at Walmart, but dreams of being a physicist. FC Sife designed seminars to teach 25 refugees how to fill out a college application and apply for financial aid. These success skills and financial literacy seminars are just the start. Over the next two years, 6,000 refugees will be coming to Jacksonville, and FC Sife is committed to helping them succeed. These refugees have come a long way, but their journey is only beginning. They smile through a hundred daily frustrations. We were there to teach, but they taught us the real meaning of determination, resilience, humor, and hope. They tell us how lucky they are, and in working with them, we realize how lucky we are. 200, the number of refugees who are participating in FC Sife's success skills and financial literacy programs. 50, the number of refugees who now have a checking account. 115, the number of refugees who are now working. 6,000, the number of refugees who are coming to Jacksonville. And FC Sife is ready. Sometimes, numbers can put you out of business. 15.2 billion. That's the financial impact that retail theft, time theft, and employee dishonesty has on our economy each year. Let me put a face with that statistic. There's someone I know. Let's call him Chuck. He was the manager of a store owned by my dad. Chuck stole $25,000. Today he is in jail, but the effects of his corruption continue to burden my family. But it's not only the $25,000 crimes that cause businesses to fail. It's employees and customers who steal $20 here and $5 there and think it's no big deal. Well, it is a big deal, and FC Sife was determined to do something about it. The store Jessica is talking about is a franchise of Winmar Corporation, which has 900 franchises across the United States and Canada that buy, sell, trade, and consign new and used products ranging from sporting goods to musical instruments. Winmark's inventory shrinkage is 12%, and 68% of that is from employee theft. That's 24% higher than the national average. Now, despite all this, Winmark had no training videos that dealt with employee theft. FC Sci proposed a series of videos that would deal with this problem. The majority of Winmark employees are 16 to 25 year olds. They're our age and speak our language. FC Sci wrote, directed, and filmed an ethics training program to target the 9,000 employees and franchise owners of Winmark Corporation. We address topics Winmark employees face, including retail theft, employee theft, and time theft. Employees didn't realize that things like talking on the phone and ignoring customers lose sales and add up to over $30,000 each year per employee. We dramatize the problems by using humor and language that employees could relate to. Now, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure he's up to something. But before we jump the gun, it is possible that he is just in fact an innocent man who happens to get cold during sweltering heat waves. But somehow, I doubt it. Here's a hot tip for you. Don't give your customers a chance to speak. Be observant and offer assistance without being asked. Keeping your eyes open isn't too hard of a task. After viewing the videos, employees take an online quiz to measure their understanding of the impact that theft has on their lives and on the bottom line. 
owners and managers are also encouraged to use FC Scythe's supplemental information package to reinforce critical points in each segment and stimulate dialogue. In February, FC Scythe took our ethics training program to New Orleans to present at one of Winmark's conferences and trade shows. The videos were shown to 700 Winmark senior staff, operations managers, and most importantly, Winmark franchise owners and managers. The video was a hit at the conference. I want to thank Jessica and her team for doing such a fantastic job with our loss prevention video. Individuals from the conference were asked to fill out surveys. 79% believe that FC Scythe's ethics training program will improve the bottom line. 100% said they would use the video in employee training. 100% asked for additional FC Scythe ethics training programs. Our goal here is the long-term improvement of Winmark's internal theft statistic. We hope to reduce Winmark's inventory shrinkage of 68% to the national level of 44% or lower by the year 2012. 103, the number of outtakes during the filming of FC Scythe's ethics training program. 900, the number of Winmark franchises using our video throughout the United States and Canada. 9,000, the number of Winmark employees being trained by FC Scythe's ethics program. 27 million, the economic impact of FC Scythe's ethics training program. Sometimes numbers can change lives. 10, that's the number of years FC Scythe has been making a difference. The FC Scythe story began with four students and a commitment to spread free enterprise. That commitment grew into a thriving organization, which in nine years has affected the lives of over 400 FC Scythe members and countless others. FC Scythe's recipe for sustainability starts at the top. The president of Father College is committed to Scythe and encourages the expansion of FC Scythe businesses, educational outreach programs, and involvement with the business community. Thanks to Flagler's administration, faculty, and our business advisory board, FC Scythe is now woven into the fabric of our college and the community. What football is to Notre Dame, FC Scythe is to Flagler College. All of our businesses and programs are designed to build legacies. Most Scythe students stay involved all four years, creating stability, continuity, professionalism, and amazing friendships that account for our program's growth and success. This year, FC Scythe has grown to 50 students, and our commitment to change lives continues. Once again, let's review this year's achievements. 2,300, the number of students who have learned about market economics, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and success skills through FC Scythe's K-12 educational outreach programs. 2.9 million, the annual economic impact of Flagler's legacy tours on the St. Augustine economy. One, the traveling lunchbox, the only business in Florida created to employ and teach the mentally challenged how to handle, prepare, and serve food. 12 million, the number of viewers for FC Scythe's ABC, NBC, financial literacy TV feature, Amero's Army. 73, the number of inventors and artists who took our green innovators save the planet challenge 200 the number of Nepalese refugees participating in FC Scythe's financial literacy and success skill seminars 9,000 the number of Winmark employees who will participate in FC Scythe's ethical training program no matter how you add subtract multiply or divide it's been a great year and a memorable decade for Flagler Scythe we have made a difference in people's lives and along the way our lives as well Thank you, Flagler College. Your presentation time has now expired, and it's now time for the question and answer period. Judges? Thank you so much. It's really commendable and outstanding that you share so much of your personal stories inside of how you're influencing and changing the world. Along with that had to have been some challenges this year. Can you share with us maybe some of the, uh, some of the the efforts you made that brought particular challenges or that are going to require a longer period of time? Probably the greatest challenge was actually creating this presentation for you. We had so many stories that we wanted to tell you. We are all so passionate about our projects. A lot of us are project leaders and it was so hard to fit all of it into this presentation. I know a lot of us were upset because maybe one of our favorite projects didn't get in. So probably the greatest challenge was making this presentation, but we chose the stories that we thought you guys needed to hear today. 
Congratulations on a great presentation. Um, just wondering in your project on the traveling lunchbox, did you involve your business advisory board at all in terms of dealing with the external situations of food safety, government, and uh, other issues in the restaurant business? We've involved our business advisory board in, along the entire way in creating the traveling lunchbox. As I, we said in our presentation, they were the ones who initially um, gave us the idea for the traveling lunchbox. In preparing for um, opening the business, we did consult them as they are experienced in the business world, and they did help us to create the plan that we were going to um, implement. Just getting advice from them, having think tanks, um, just really consulting them the whole way through. You mentioned that um, the number one reason why students dropped out of school, I'm right here, the number one reason why students dropped out of school is because they were not engaged. And then after completing the information you taught them, I believe you said you had a 98% success rate of keeping students in school. Is that, is that correct? Would you, that's phenomenal. Would you repeat that? This uh, number was actually, we did pre and post tests and that was the number of students, the percentage who decided that we, they were committed to staying in school. And just to add to that, we've been working with the organization that we presented Destination Denim to, it's CROP or the College Reach Out Program. We've been working with them since the formation of our team 10 years ago. And as a result, we've seen many students, we've done a number of market economics and other projects with them, including Bobby Banana Goes Global, which Destination Denim involved from. And over time, we have seen that many of them have graduated, and we hope to see those future successes. Many of the students who never thought they would graduate from high school are now applying for or going to college, which is an overwhelming success and one, again, we hope to continue in the future. Over here. Uh, congratulations. With respect to the Nepalese refugee project, have there been any ongoing efforts to monitor the success of the individuals who were, who were looking for jobs or seeking college admission? Yes, there have. With Sirawat, which is what we call this program, it means creating new beginnings in Nepalese. Um, with this program, we've been working with the refugees every step of the way. Um, they have a lot to learn. I mean, something that we take for granted, something as simple as cleaning a bathroom is something that they have to be taught. But with college and with applying for jobs, we have worked with them, we will continue to work with them, and we do monitor them. And so far, um, they've, received, they've, they've been very successful. What's even more amazing is that with this particular group, the Nepalese refugees are so close that we are teaching the initial group to teach others. So it really em embodies the SIFE spirit. We're teaching others to teach, and it really is a fantastic program for us. Uh, congratulations on some really impressive presentations. Uh, do you have other examples of some of the inventions that came out of your Green Evaders uh, competition? Well, like we said, a lot of them were kind of outrageous, like the kinetic kicks. That, they were shoes that actually created energy while you walked. Um, there was also um, a bicycle that while you worked out created energy. There was um, solar blinds, and then there was the winning invention, which was the solar powered recumbent vehicle. Uh, hi there. Uh, great presentation. Um, I loved uh, a bunch of your uh, initiatives. The one that I'm uh, very interested in is the training video. You mentioned that there was a saving of $27 million. How, how did you calculate that? Well, with the ethics, the Winmark program, we worked directly with Winmark's Human Resource Department, and Steve Murphy, the president of Winmark, who you saw in the video, is the one who gave us that economic impact. And he actually told us that that is um, a very conservative economic impact. There are 900 stores that we're affecting, both in the United States and Canada. And they're so excited about this program that they've actually given us a list of about 20 other videos they want. So um, we've had great successes with it, and we hope that next the year... The question and answer period time has expired. Judges, please join me in thanking the Flagler College SIFE team.